Alrighty, y'all. Welcome back to Rock and Roll Garage. I think the last time you've seen this old girl, the IROC, we uh, did a little lifter swap on her. Got her quieted up. And uh, when we were trying to start her, she kind of just didn't want to run right at first. Um, so we had a, we're had we going to have to kind of hook up the computer to her and see what the Holly's doing and stuff. Um, see what's going on, if we get any weird readings or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to do in this video today. Hook up the laptop to her, run the Holly system and see what's going on, if it needs to relearn again. Um, if it does, then uh, we'll go through that process, which isn't bad, and then uh, we will uh, probably street drive this thing and see how she does. And uh, yeah, it's kind of what we're going to be doing in this video. So uh, let's hop over to it. All right, let's climb up in this girl here. Get the seat back some. Let's uh, plug this girl in. Let's try to download from ECU. Can't remember if the key has to be on. I feel like it does. Let's just see what she does here. Yeah, see, she's not uh, running right. We're gonna open a data log here that I got from my old laptop. If this thing will give us any type of readings. Which to me, it doesn't look like this. Let's we'll try to start it and see what the heck happens. She's running now. Uh, I somehow hit log and it started working. So we don't have any fuel pressure because I don't have a fuel pressure gauge hooked up to it. Maps reading, RPMs reading, air temp, oil pressure is good, and fuel ratio is pretty solid. And that's all we pretty much have on this thing. Uh, we do have a coolant temp sensor that we could probably bring up here. At about 119 it says, which isn't bad. We are in a no learn right as of right now. So I'm pretty sure once you get up to temp, it may should start to go into a, an actual learn. See so if we can click on learn table here. Let her get up the temp and see if she actually, uh, you know, starts to try to learn. You can see when I give her a little bit of throttle, see how that goes into open loop real quick? So we're going to have to let her uh, get up the temp here and see if she starts to learn.
60, that's when it starts to learn at. So we're getting close. Yeah, see how it changed? We're at about 165. And it's learning. So, I'll come back here. I'll let her run for a bit, which is good. I'm glad that that's what it did because I was kind of afraid that something was wrong with that ECU. So, I gotta go get some gas. I'll probably get like a couple gallons of 93 and we'll uh, shove her in there. And then we'll shut her off and let her learn, you know. But she's changing stuff as we're talking. Yeah, you can see we're only at a 7% learn. Which, I don't know if over time that goes up, you know, as you drive her and stuff. But man, she still sounds quiet, which is awesome. She's not smoking too bad either. I know she had a little bit of oil leaking on her. Yeah, see now it's, see it's at 6%. I don't know what that does, but whatever. We got good oil pressure and stuff. What's our coolant temp? Coolant temp's 181, perfect. Manifold air temperature, 120 degrees. This AFR is reading pretty good. Definitely not compared to this thing. Still learning, which is awesome. We're definitely gonna need to get some gas though, cause she's looking a little low. Smoking, cause she's got some oil on her. up to the laptop while I'm driving, cruise around, see what she does. Um, but yeah, she's, she's smoking. All right. A little bit of a data log. Keep that key off. So we got that saved in there. So later on today, let's uh, see here. Let's uh, kick our key on. Oh yeah. We're definitely low on fuel. I don't I think it's like literally out of gas. <laughs> well, we might have shut it off at the perfect time because <laughs> I'm pretty sure she is done. The sound of that pump sounds like there's nothing in there. Moved up a little bit. Pump sounds a little bit uh how you say like there's nothing in it or it might have just died yeah barely any fuel pressure so yeah she's she's low let's see if uh this helps not a lot of pressure in that tank either i could hear it gurgling in there before so i'm i'm sure it's freaking almost out i don't think this is going to change anything yeah got to be low so good place to stop as of right now um we'll go get a couple gallons of gas throw it in here and then uh let this thing cool down for a minute first we'll toss it in here and uh that should take care of the fuel issue <laughs> um of having none sucks we got a bunch of oil and junk on these headers because they're gonna smoke for a bit um especially with that wrap on there they always seem to smoke a very long time, so whatever. But uh, I'd like to get this thing backed out, running in the open, so it's not sitting here in the garage smoking like that because you can barely breathe in here when it does that. But good thing is, is we're co connected with the ECU. It's talking to us, and we're watching it relearn again. So hopefully we can drive it and stuff and uh, 
see what she does but yeah definitely uh running low on the fuel so i'll go get some and i'll see you guys in a bit so you guys i actually was trying to do like a sync with the ecu before like i went up there and got gas and stuff i kept saying update firmware you don't have the correct firmware blah 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 so that's currently what i'm doing it took me a couple tries um to like get it to start updating i had to cycle the key off and on but seems like it's working now so we'll see what happens i actually saved the file to the actual computer here for the base map on this thing or base tune i guess you'd say so we're gonna try to figure out how to get that loaded back into here into the ecu i personally can't remember but because it's been so long since i've messed with this thing but we'll figure it out hey y'all so this used to be build 64 and we got it up to 110 that's what it wanted the version the firmware to be at I had to redo this a bunch of times, try to cycle the key off and on, and then ended up what I did was unhook the power for the fans because that was running, unhook the power for the actual um, amplifier and the sub in the back because that's drawing power. And then I hooked up this battery charger on like a low amp charge just to keep this battery maintained for the ECU because I know these Hollies do not like to see drops in uh voltage on the battery and stuff they just don't seem like they like that a lot and they say they don't like that so we got her updated i was able to get the um, fuel pump to cycle let's see if it does it again yeah fuel pump cycling so that's good so i'm gonna come back later get this thing pulled out get some gas in it let it run and then maybe we'll take it for a drive and see what she does all right y'all so it is a new day you know life gets ahead of you quick here uh, so I got some gas and unfortunately I only have a two gallon gas can um, so what we're gonna have to do at that point is try to almost get this thing running and then uh, get it up to a gas station. So we'll get it out of here, pull it out of the garage, and then have the laptop hooked up. We got a gas station right up the street. It should make it there. And we'll put some more gas in it. Let's see if we can uh, get this in there without making a huge, huge mess. Let's see what happens. I don't know gonna be able to I swear this always happens when you're pouring out of these tanks is it just goes everywhere if you pour quick it seems to stop not drip as bad what happened to the world where we just you know had stuff that worked right So I'm going to tell you right now, nobody uses those nozzles on these uh, safety gas tanks. Nobody. At least nobody that messes with cars. Try to almost get all of this in there because there was not a lot left. Alright. Still a little bit in there, but we're going to keep it at that. Didn't even get any on the towel. That's nice. And this gas cap is always a pain to get on. I don't know if it's the angle of the neck or something. It's like I gotta push real hard and hold it so it doesn't do the click thing, you know? What's Butter's crying to me about? What are you crying about? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna get this thing hooked up, get this tarp off of it, get stuff out of the way of it, and uh, maybe I'll check the tires first. Cause it's been sitting for a bit and I'm sure they've gone down some. So uh, we'll make sure those pressures are somewhat okay. And uh, pull her out of here. All right, let's start this bad girl up and see what she does.
rain, but realistically, a couple drops on this girl ain't gonna hurt her. She needs cleaned up anyway. So I think we're gonna try to make it up to the gas station because she's definitely gonna need some fuel here. So I'm gonna close up the garage and stuff. We're gonna hit it. go to sleep I need to turn that off we have to move over that's well, just grand we have to move over to a different pump so annoying come on dude don't get it was right to the pump I need to go to These gas pumps at this gas station around the street for me really grind my gears. Let's get this thing back home. We put about 30 bucks into her, which should be decent enough. Are you fuck, dude? People out here. This is the other problem with driving your classic car out here, dude. It's people on the road just have no sympathy and don't even know what the heck's going on.
Man, she is freaking huffing, dude. These header wraps get all that oil soaked in them, and then they just smoke. Especially this side. This side might be cheating from lower. Ooh. Yeah, our valve cover's leaking. Look it. You can see the <clears throat> pullage right there. That's why. Maybe that thing came loose. Let's get a ratchet and stuff and see. It's cooled down already. Nah, it's not loose. We might have to pull that off. Woo, that thing's hot, boy. leak on the worst side, you know. You may have to kind of flip this guy. Something like this. Man, even that rubber's freaking hot. I don't know if that's going to do anything. But I guess we'll see, huh? I guess uh, let's uh, start her up and see if we see any flowage, huh? smoke a bit because she's got to burn all that other stuff off. I don't know if you guys can see this very good, but air fuel ratio is pretty good. We're in learning. We're in closed loop. So oil pressure is about 48, 50, which is good. Temps at 180. We're looking good. So we're going to let this girl run for a bit, maybe a while try to have her burn all that junk off and we'll keep an eye on that leak and see if we see anything but man listen to this girl Woo so i ended up doing something here i had a pcb run into there and i'm like man this thing never used to smoke like that and that's the only thing I added to it, and I really didn't drive it too much when I added that. And as you can see, right when I pulled the PCB and plugged it, you can see that breather starting to work, or that catch can. I have a breather on the passenger side too, but you know, when you have a, when you have like a, you know, built motor like this, that's built for racing and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna have a little bit of blow by because your ring gap's not gonna be super, super tight because this thing's built for nitrous and all that kind of stuff. So you're gonna have a little bit of blow by on these built motors and you know, so, so much is only good. But I know that I don't think I have a bad valve or a seat or anything like that because I mean, it may turn out that, you know, that is what it is, but you see all these guys who have these built motors, you know, Cletus, all these guys that, and they've got big, huge catch cans on them, at least the catch can each side or some type of setup like that because built motors have blow by that's just what it is now I might get some controversy in the comments but there's a reason all these guys run catch cans and stuff like that because um, stuff builds up in these built motors it's not a it's not a factory application 
So, but yeah, literally right when I pulled that PCV valve and plugged it, you could see that breather starting to work. And that's always how I've had it before that. I just had the catch can on one side and the breather on the other. So I'm just gonna obviously keep letting her run here. So I try to still burn off that oil off the wrap. We'll see if it actually works. I may have to end up degreasing the thing, but I'm gonna let her keep running here and see if maybe the smoke dies down. Now that we got it in there, it's gonna take another minute for that to burn off the exhaust, if that's the actual issue. But we're just sit, pretty much sitting here watching paint dry. But at least we get to listen to some bald eagles. Smoke has definitely calmed down on this side. You can see on the bottom here. Not too much anymore. Remember it was puffing out of there. So this side seeping a little bit. So I think I'm gonna have to pull that cover and I think I have to flip that gasket if I'm correct. We're still smoking a little bit out of this exhaust, but like I said, I think this thing... Merkel! This thing needs to be driven, so that's probably what we're going to have to do. I'm going to pull that valve cover, flip it, and then watch it and see what happens. So I popped the muffler off because you can maybe kind of see that bottom's like kind of coated in oil. This thing's really freaking raspy now. We'll just keep letting it run. Sorry, y'all. We're gonna uh, try to just take her up the street really quick. Get some shots of her, maybe. Like I said, she needs to be driven anyway. This ain't gonna be much, but you hear our pump freaking whining back there, man. Seems like that pump gets like that when it gets hot. Below the fuel tank, so we got to fix that exhaust. We got another video coming on this after this one, though. She stopped smoking up front a lot, it looks like, so that's good. We got a couple clips you hear that that's when that that squeakiness that's when that freaking slave cylinder gets hot from the exhaust that's exactly what that is
always like to let these fans run when I shut it off. Get some of the hot air out of there, you know? But I'd say kind of today is a success. Um, yesterday and today. You know, I had to figure out kind of what was going on with ECU. I wasn't sure as far as, you know, what was going on and why it was acting the way it was. But it seems like it's running pretty good now. And I know that the ECU is not bad. So that's good. I saved the file in there after I ran it the last time, after I data logged it. We're going to have to do that a little bit more as we get some more miles on it. I'm just running out of time because I think it's going to storm here in a bit. But we got a good couple clips of it up there in the parking lot, which is cool. Um, this thing, can't get enough of it sometimes, you know. Like just hitting it a little bit there up and down the street just takes me back. And it's pretty freaking fast, man. I hit the first first gear on the street here and it just blew the tires off of it. So, that's probably where we'll end it. Look for something soon on this. We have to fix that exhaust. There's the hangers broke off on it in the back. And we gotta figure something out for this clutch like slave cylinder thing on here because it's just too, it's sitting on the exhaust. It gets hot. You heard it when I was talking about it, when I was pushing it in, when it gets hot. It's just not right. So we either have to finagle the exhaust or we have to get a smaller, they have a, they sell a clutch slave cylinder that's smaller for this thing. And I think that's what we're gonna, we're gonna do. Um, and it's adjustable, because I think we need to adjust it a little bit for this uh, like stage three clutch I have in it. Um, so yeah, I think that's where we're gonna end it. Hopefully get some more content on this girl. It feels good driving it. Her it feels good listening to her running quietly. Been waiting for that for a very long time. And we got some leaks figured out and stuff, and not really more any more smoke. The exhaust still seems a little bit smoky, but like I said, we're gonna have to drive it some more for that to go away. And sitting at idle, it, it usually seems to be worse. But I think that's where I'm going to leave it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We're getting close to a thousand subscribers, guys. And that's kind of one of my first little goals here is just to get to that point. Hopefully, we can, and I hope you can help me. So hit that subscribe button for me if you like content like this. Any type of car content, hit that subscribe button because it's going to keep coming. Um, hit the like. Leave a comment if you like this car or what you want to see more of. For now. Take it easy.